Welcome everyone. I'm very delighted to be here today kicking off the first iBiology Mentoring Masterclass. I'm going to talk today about one of my very favorite subtopics of mentoring, which is peer mentoring groups. This is the first of a three-part series. Uh, the first part is going to be about what is a peer mentoring group and a little bit about why mentoring is fantastic, even if you don't think that yet. Um, the second part will be more about the logistics of forming an actual peer mentoring group. And finally, some mentoring general best practices that will help you in all of your mentoring relationships, groups, or one-on-one -on -one mentoring. What is mentoring? Really, people think about this as some sort of loaded, loaded uh, relationship, comes from Greek mythology, a lifelong teacher. In fact, I, I saw a Nobel Prize winner say that a mentor was always someone who was in your life forever. And that's just really not the case. Uh, you can have a mentor for a minute, you can have a mentor for a week, and you can have a mentor for a really long time. But it's not even always a formal relationship. Anyone who's teaching you uh, perhaps a, a long-term technical skill or shares advice or even inspires you can be a mentor. Mentors are not there to solve specific problems. They're really there to help ask questions and to help you work through making difficult decisions. Um, it doesn't have to be something big and loaded. And mentors may come in and out of your life, and you may be lucky enough to find a mentor that does stay with you for a long time and serves as a mentor. And that's great. That should happen naturally, though. It's not the kind of thing that you should expect or um, push for if it doesn't come naturally. So mentoring really solves the purpose of helping you navigate change. And we have so much change in our lives. If you look at your career path, every time you make a transition, every time you're promoted, every time you want to be promoted, every time your life situation changes, maybe you have to change your geography, all those changes are really stressful. Um, and so mentors really help you work through that stress, think about the choices that you make, not that any choice is necessarily right or wrong, but maybe make the right choice at the time and help you work through all those different changes. So the more mentors you have in your life, the better, because change is gonna happen and different types of change will need different types of support. Organizations that have a lot of mentoring and teaching also really benefit from it. And I mention this because I'd like you to think about your own organization and perhaps how you can bring more of a mentoring culture to your group, your department, your lab, wherever it is that you are working. One thing that's really been shown is that mentoring cultures improve communication. Communication is so hard. When people have a culture of mentoring, that is people are mentoring one another formally and informally, communication is just better. People are learning and sharing and teaching in a just more lively, more beneficial fashion. And so communication is the number one problem as companies grow, as organizations grow, even among labs. Um, almost everything that goes wrong in at my job has to do with a miscommunication every time. So strengthening mentoring ties, having everybody teaching all the time is going to make communication better across the board. In addition, uh, people like to learn and grow. Scientists by their very nature in particular, that's kind of my definition of a scientist. It's people who are learning stuff all the time. That's what we learn how to do. We learn how to learn stuff. And so when we're learning and we're changing and growing, that's when we're happy. And mentoring cultures are always about learning and changing and growing and developing. And so if you want to be in an organization that really retains its employees and that um, has great innovation and productivity, look for cultures where mentoring is strong, where people are teaching one another and there are many mentoring relationships. And finally, this talk is not about diversity, but anyone who's ever seen me speak knows that that's another topic that's very important to me. And the reason I got started working on mentoring programs way back when with the Mass Association for Women in Science is that mentoring was shown to be the one thing that could actually move the needle for inclusion. That having strong mentoring networks within an organization helped underrepresented groups and women move more smoothly into leadership roles and advance in their careers. So there aren't that many tactics that actually do increase inclusion. So this is a really important one to look for in your organization and in the organizations that you choose. So as I mentioned, you don't just have one mentor. Um, when I was applying for my job at Agene, I had to review the balance sheet with the founding CFO of the company. 
And I had never looked at a balance sheet in my life. And I called out to all of my mentors, in particular, my fantastic sister-in-law, who sat me down and walked me through that thing line by line and made sure that I understood what every line meant. That was an important mentoring experience in my life. And she is just one of the many mentors that I call on when I need to learn something new or um, perhaps even just need a pep talk. Mentors also serve as cheerleaders and um, they can help you get through a really rough time. So you are forming your posse now. And one of the great reasons to think about peer mentors is that these people can be your mentors for a long time and they know you well, and they're going to be able to provide really good mentoring for you as you go through your lives in your careers together. As much as I love one-on-one -on -one mentoring when it works, it pretty much is very hard to do it in an unnatural way. So formal mentoring programs are often asked you to be matched one-on-one -on -one with a mentor. And unfortunately, this process is a lot like dating, which has a lot of mismatch failure. So if you've ever been set up on a date by an aunt or a relative or even a friend, it doesn't hit that often. Same thing with one-on-one -on -one mentoring. It is almost impossible to match two people and get that spark that makes them want to work together for a long time. It's a two-way thing. It's not anybody's fault. What happens in the group is somehow the group works together and in 95% of the groups that I've been involved in, and that is hundreds, somehow the group manages to find a way to work together and be a, a positive experience for one another. There's a dynamic change there in a group mentoring situation. So if you're looking for a situation that's going to have a positive outcome, seeking group mentoring is a fantastic way to get started. There are a lot of other reasons why group mentoring is great. You get to be a mentor and a mentee at the same time. It's great leadership training. It's great management training. And you get a lot more advice. There's nothing like brainstorming with six or seven people about what your next step should be in a development plan as opposed to one person. You're just going to get more ideas and more perspectives. So group mentoring really works. I'm an enormous proponent for both formal and informal group mentoring. So one of the best ways to learn to be a good mentee, and we'll talk about what that is, is to be a mentor. And so in a peer mentoring group or a mentoring group, you also get to sometimes mentor when one of the other people needs that cheerleading support, advice, those great questions. You can do that and practice doing that. It's going to make you a better manager. It's going to better make you a better person working with your colleagues for the future. So there's so many benefits to group mentoring that really it, it stands far and above as a model for what you want to do in seeking mentors. So what do I mean by being a good mentee? I think the important thing about being a good mentee is being willing to take advice. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, if you're not willing to hear the advice and the feedback and the suggestions from the people in your group, then you're really not ready to be mentored. And so um, they're not going to be satisfied and you're not going to be satisfied by that experience. So the bottom line of being a good mentee is being re re ready to take suggestions and um, at least think about if those suggestions are worth implementing in your experience and in your next practice. And that's really all it takes to be a good mentee. When it comes to a mentoring group, the other part needs to be that you are engaged in the group. So if six people are being mentored together, then you all need to be engaged and make a commitment to the group to be involved. So two things to being a good mentee in a group, listening and being ready to consider the advice that is offered and engage, because the more you engage, the more you're going to get out of the experience. You know who can be the really awesome mentors is your peers. Not someone older than you, not someone more experienced, not someone more important, whatever that means, um, but just the people around you. They get you. They know what you're going through. They know the stress that you're having, and they completely understand the situations um, that you're going to be describing to the team. So if your first group mentoring experience is with your peers and there isn't even a senior mentor in that group, it doesn't matter. Um, there is plenty of content and knowledge that you guys can work on as a group together and the group can, can bond over their learning and teach one another. So if you don't have a great mentor as a lab head, 
um, as a lifelong mentor that you found in your networking. If you don't have one of those, it's a great time for you to think about for forming your first peer mentoring circle. And in addition, um, Speaking from the iBiology platform, you know, there's a newly launched program through iBiology of these courses. And forming a peer, peer mentoring group to take these courses together is going to add enormous value to the experience. And later on in some of the other talks, we'll talk more about how using content can make a peer mentoring group really successful and soar and get the most of the experience. So really consider this. It's a pretty easy thing to set up, and I'm sure that you will find other people who are, want to go on this journey with you. So why does peer mentoring work so well? Well, the secret sauce of mentoring is not even so much the advice, and you know, a little bit it's the questions, and a little bit it's the discussion, but the secret sauce of mentoring is the accountability. If you have a few other people are saying to you, hey, Joanne, you said you were going to do three informational interviews last month. How come that didn't happen? Well, you're going to get that thing done. Having accountability for our personal goals, not just our technical goals and writing papers and the things that were in academia, perhaps, that we are being forced to do or our deliverables in our job. Those things we have to do and people are making, them, making us do them for our jobs. What mentoring brings is the accountability for our own personal growth and development. And peers are great at helping with that. If I did not have in the before times, before COVID, um, four women at the gym who would text me if I didn't show up every morning at 5.30, um, there are a lot of days I would have rolled over and turned off the alarm. But knowing that those texts were gonna come really brought me the accountability to be a much more regular person at the gym exercising. Um, and so um, look for that accountability. It's going to help you be more accomplished. So thanks for joining us for this first part of the Peer Mentoring Masterclass. Um, I hope you will join us for the rest of the series.